For centuries, humans have been fascinated by the possibility of finding life beyond Earth. We have imagined countless scenarios of how aliens might look like, behave, and communicate. We have created stories, movies, and games that depict our fantasies and fears of encountering extraterrestrial beings. But is alien life just a product of our imagination, or is it a reality waiting to be discovered? Scientists have been searching for signs of life in the cosmos for decades, using various methods and instruments. They have scanned the skies for radio signals, sent probes and rovers to explore other planets and moons, and analyzed the light from distant stars for clues about their planets. One of the most powerful tools in this quest is NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which was launched in 2009 with the mission of finding Earth-like planets around other stars. Kepler has discovered over 4,000 exoplanets so far, many of which are potentially habitable. But among all these discoveries, one stands out as the most shocking and outrageous ever, the TRAPPIST-1 system. In 2017, NASA announced that they had found seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a red dwarf star called TRAPPIST-1, located about 40 light-years away from us. What's more, Three of these planets are in the habitable zone of their star, meaning they could have liquid water on their surface. This discovery was hailed as a breakthrough in the search for alien life, as it offered the best chance yet of finding a second Earth. The TRAPPIST-1 planets are so close to each other that they would appear as large as the moon in each other's sky. They are also tidally locked, meaning that one side always faces the star and the other side is always in darkness. This could create extreme temperature differences and weather patterns on the planets. But could any of these planets actually harbor life? Scientists have been working hard to answer this question, using various methods and models to estimate the properties and conditions of the planet. They have looked at factors such as their mass, radius, density, gravity, temperature, atmosphere, and chemistry. They have also tried to simulate how life could evolve and adapt to such environments. The results have been astonishing and surprising. According to some studies, some of the TRAPPIST-1 planets could have oceans, clouds, volcanoes, and even seasons. They could also have a variety of life forms, ranging from simple microbes to complex animals. Some of these life forms could be similar to those on Earth, while others could be completely different and exotic. But how can we know for sure if there is life on the TRAPPIST-1 planets? That's why NASA and other space agencies are sending new missions and telescopes to study these type of planets in more detail. Some of these missions include the James Webb Space Telescope, which is able to detect chemical signatures of life in atmospheres of alien planets, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, which searches for more exoplanets around nearby stars. But what if we could go even further? What if we could actually visit and explore the TRAPPIST-1 planets ourselves? This may sound like science fiction, but it could become a reality in the not-too-distant future. With advances in technology and engineering, we could someday build spacecrafts that can travel faster than light or use wormholes or warp drives to bend space and time. We could also develop new ways of surviving and thriving in harsh environments, such as bioengineering, nanotechnology, or artificial intelligence. We could even terraform some of the planets to make them more suitable for human habitation. Imagine what it would be like to set foot on one of these alien worlds. To see their strange landscapes, their exotic skies, their mysterious moons. To encounter their diverse and bizarre life. Let us introduce you to some of these possible alien species that we might encounter on one of the TRAPPIST-1 planets. These are based on our own imagination and speculation, but they are also inspired by some scientific principles and facts. 
This is Lumivore, a worm-like creature that lives on bright side of the planet, where the temperature is warm and the light is plenty. It has a bioluminescent organ that emits a faint glow, which helps it to attract prey and mates. It feeds on organic matter that are found on the planet's surface, including other smaller creatures. It has a thick furry coat that insulates it from the cold and a flexible body that allows it to burrow into the ground or climb on rocks. It reproduces by laying eggs in clusters, which hatch after a few days. This is Solaris, a tree-like creature that lives on the dark side of the planet, where the temperature is very low and the light is less. It has a plant or tree-like body. It can rotate its body to face the star and absorb its energy through photosynthesis. It feeds minerals and microorganisms that it extracts from the soil with its roots. It reproduces by releasing spores into the air, which are carried by the wind to other locations. This is a pancakus, an animal-like creature that lives in the twilight zone of the planet, where the temperature and light are moderate. It has a flat, round body that looks like a pancake with two eyes on one side and... It has long, thin legs that allow it to run fast and jump high. It feeds on plants and animals that it finds in its environment. It reproduces by splitting into two identical copies, which then grow into new individuals. These are just some of the possible alien species that we might encounter on one of the Trappist-1 planets. There could be many more, each with their own unique features and adaptations to their environment. Some of them could be friendly and cooperative, while others could be hostile and aggressive. Some of them could be intelligent and curious, while others could be primitive and instinctive. Some of them could be similar to us, while others could be completely different from us. How would we communicate with these alien species? How would we understand them and their behavior? How would we coexist peacefully with them? These are some of the questions that we might face if we ever visit one of these alien worlds. But before we can do any of these things, we need to find out if there is life on these planets in the first place. We need to confirm if these planets are habitable or not. We need to determine if these planets are worth visiting or not. We need to decide if these planets are our destiny or not. What do you think? Do you believe there is life on these planets? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching the most amazing channel, and stay tuned for more amazing videos about space exploration.